Welcome to part one of my Dirty Bomb Beginner's Guide. Before we jump into gameplay, we'll be tweaking our game settings, and in this video, I'll exclusively be focusing on the game's option menu. Before you run away, because it doesn't seem exciting enough or worth worrying about, you need to know that there are a lot of game-changing options that can seriously increase how well you play. Also know that these settings are not advanced or hidden. I'll only be dealing with settings accessible in the game menu and not in config files. A lot of players don't even bother with this, but I don't think they realize how impactful it can be. I'll be showcasing the settings I personally feel are beneficial to improving your gameplay. I'm heavily emphasizing that this is only my personal opinion of what's best. Most of these settings rely on your personal preference. Here is the example of before and after I showed at the beginning of the video. Note that in both clips, I lose the same amount of health over the same length of time. The point isn't that I got kills, it's how much easier it is for me to aim and control the situation without all the chaos and visual clutter on my screen. I'll quickly go over the settings I use without explanation, and then I'll explain them in depth after the fact for anyone who might be interested. To start, click the gear icon on the top right of your screen to open the options menu. For your crosshair, set it to medium sized dot, disable hit indicators. 90 to 100 FOV is ideal, but I stick to 100 and disable all camera animations. In screen effects, disable blood and lens flares. In controls, there's only two settings that matter, disabling mouse smoothing, and in the advanced tab, disable sprint cancels reloading. And of course there's your sensitivity, but I can't tell you what to set that to. On to video. Play at your native resolution if possible, with vSync disabled. In the advanced video tab, disable all but two options. The two settings you leave on are dynamic shadows and one frame interval. Finally, in audio, the only option to worry about is enabling hit beeps. And that's it, everything else is default, which will take your game from looking like this to this. Which doesn't seem like much when you're standing still, but in game, there's a world of difference. Now if you're actually interested in what all of those settings have done for us, I'll cover that now. The only setting that really needs to be explained in the crosshair menu is Hit Indicator. Its only purpose is to alert you when you've damaged an enemy by displaying a large X around your crosshair. I've replaced its function with the Hit Beep in the audio options. The Hit Beep also has the bonus of making distinct high-pitched ping sounds when you land a headshot, so it provides more information with less screen clutter. Next in the view tab we have FOV, also known as field of view or field of vision. The setting determines the width and the height of the vision you have on your screen. Here we can see the comparison between 65 and 100. With 65 we have a very limited viewing angle, but as I increase it you start to see much more of the screen. We're now able to see objects that were completely off the screen before, without even moving. If those had been enemy players we wouldn't even have known they were standing beside us. The only drawback of increasing your FOV is that it essentially zooms your camera out, making it harder to see distances. But we can compensate for that by aiming down our weapon sights, also known as ADS. With any game settings, ADS seems to toggle your FOV back to 65, allowing you to zoom in when you're playing with higher FOV settings. The next few options under FOV basically just shake your camera around when you're moving to simulate motion and inertia. You can see a comparison on screen now. The changes are subtle. From a gameplay point of view, all it really does is make it slightly harder to aim accurately. The two options we disabled in the screen effects are really similar to the camera shaking effects in the last tab. They have a function, but it inherently reduces our vision. With blood on, it makes your screen flash red when you take damage, but we're able to tell when we've been hurt when it's disabled, so it's just a hindrance. Lens flare and dirt are purely aesthetic and do nothing but put more clutter and mess on your screen. Now to the advanced video tab. With your graphic settings at the lowest, you increase your game's performance and your frame rate, allowing you to aim more reliably while slightly increasing the visibility of enemy players on the map. Dynamic shadow is only enabled because there's times when an enemy shadow will give away their position before you actually see the player model, giving you a slight advantage. The one frame interval is dependent on your computer. Having it on may cause mouse or keyboard lag, but for most of the people I've talked to, it seems to increase performance and frame rate without actually giving the drawback of input lag. That pretty much covers any dramatic changes we've done with the results being more utility, more visibility, less screen clutter, and higher frame rates. 
One small tidbit, if you check your options while in the game, opposed to in the main menu, you have a few extra options there. One being the ability to change your mouse sensitivity to the first decimal place, allowing you to fine tune your speed. The other options are the ability to change your crosshair colors. That covers everything I wanted for this topic. Thanks for watching my beginner's Dirty Bomb Game Settings Guide. Stick around and I'll be uploading my beginner's class and loadout guide very soon. The playlist for this series is in the description below.